Okay, this video is for those who are using these LoRa radios from eBite, which you can see in my bench. Now, the one on the left could be the monitoring area, so you could have a sensor, like a temperature sensor or a humidity sensor, connected to a microcontroller, and you could send that data from this radio over to this radio. So this is the distance that we have to cover, and if you look at the spec sheet of these LoRa radios for the range, they could be as high as 8 kilometers. Now that's under ideal conditions, you probably won't see that. So you have to have visual line of sight between the two antennas and radio line of sight. Now radio line of sight is the area around the visual line of sight that's clear of obstructions and it's called a Fresnel zone and it's shaped like a football. Now if you go online you could get a Fresnel zone calculator and you could calculate the amount of uh, space you need around your visual line of sight that's free of obstructions. Now if the distance between the two LoRa radios is too far and they can't communicate, then we could build a repeater. Now this would be a store and forward repeater and we would need another radio like this and we would put it up high so we could communicate with it and we could add a microcontroller. So now we could send data from this transmitter to this receiver. It would store it in the microcontroller and it would be sent and be forwarded to this receiver. Now I've built these repeaters using a flip module from Parallax and they worked out very well. Okay, I have an RF field strength meter powered up so we can monitor the sensor out in the field sending the data packet and then we can actually see the repeater repeating that data packet. So I'll send the data packet from the field there it is there, now it will be repeated by the repeater. Okay, I have built a few of those repeaters using the flip module from Parallax and they worked out very well. I actually used one on a, on a ski resort and solved a lot of problems. But now there's an easier way to build a repeater. If you're using the E22 series of eBite LoRa radios like you can see here, these are capable of becoming repeaters. You just enable the firmware inside and they, they could become a repeater. Now you have to put this in some kind of enclosure and a power supply and there's another option for that. Okay, here's an enclosure that you could get from eBite, and it has the E22 LoRa module inside. So you can mount it on a DIN rail. It has a voltage regulator inside. There's your antenna. There's your power. So 8 volts to 28 volts. And there's your programming input port. It's RS45. And we have LEDs in the front. We've got a power LED, TX, RX. And here's our two mode uh, LEDs for putting it into program mode or normal mode and we, we change modes by this button here. So what I have to do is add a add an antenna and a power supply and we got ourselves a repeater ready to go. Okay here's my standalone repeater. So I have a power supply. I've got 120 volts AC to 24 volts and that's fed into the power input of my repeater. I've got an antenna. It's on a DIN rail. So all I have to do is just mount this to a wall, plug in the power, and I got myself a standalone repeater. Okay, if you have a look at the data sheet for the E22 series of LoRa radio modules from eBite, you can see this little block diagram. You can see node 1, that would be my transmitter, and node 2 would be my receiver, and the repeater is labeled repeater 2. So it does its routing using the net ID. So from the transmitter, we transmit a data packet using net ID 8, and that's going to go to the repeater, and it's going to repeat from 8 to 33, and the net ID of our receiver is, is net ID 33. That's how it repeats. And you can see we could have multiple repeaters. If we want to go uh, a long distance, we could actually uh, hop with more repeaters for, for more range. And if you look down at the uh, configuration software, you can see where it says relay, and there's a disable enable. So you enable the relay part, and then we could set our address, our channel, and our net ID. Okay, if we send a data packet from our sensor through the repeater, and we have a look at the scope. The first data burst there is from our sensor, and then there's a little time delay, and then there's the repeater repeating that data. And if we zoom in, the latency between the input and output of the repeater is about 20 milliseconds. Now I have made a video on how to build your own monopole ground plane antenna for 950 megahertz using a female chassis mount end connector, and it works out very well. But I had a lot of viewers comment that there was hard to find this connector so I've built a variation of this uh, monopole ground plane antenna using a BNC connector which is maybe easier to get. So here it is here. So I'm using a PC board, a copper clad board, about an inch square. And then I solder my radials on the bottom and there's the, your BNC connector on the bottom. 
and this antenna works out very well that you could use for the LoRa repeater. Okay, I have my BNC monopole ground plane antenna connected up to my vector analyzer. And you can see I'm getting a VSWR of 1.05 and I'm getting a return loss of 30. So it's really good. This is a really good antenna that we could use for our LoRa repeater. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on these E22 series LoRa radios from eBite and how you can make them into a repeater. Because most applications I see, they're going to be down at ground level, so you're not going to get that advertised range as in the data sheet. So if you have problems with range, consider building a repeater.